Production funding for Ruckus has been provided by gifts from Dave and Jamie Cummings, The Hartwig Family, Hush Blackwell, Barbara and Peter Gattermeyer, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Ruckus, our weekly food for thought fight over the news of the day and the trends of the times. I'm Mike Shannon. The Ruckettes join me shortly. Our topics this week, Johnson County conservatives are told money is the wrong answer. You're probably wrong if you think the KCI debate is over. And you're really wrong if you believe Democrats and Republicans think alike. Plus, roast and toast. But we start with our newsmaker segment and talk with a Kansas Cityan who is closely involved with Missouri politics and government. He is State Senator Ryan Sylvie from the 17th District in Clay County. Sylvie earlier served in the Missouri House after a stint as a legislative aide to then U.S. Senator Kit Bond. Senator Sylvie is known as an outspoken Republican who does not always follow the party line. And we're pleased to welcome State Senator Ryan Sylvie to Ruckus. Senator, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, uh, is that fair to say you don't always follow the party line? Yeah, I mean, I guess so. I, I just kind of do whatever I, I think is the right thing to do, and if, if that's where the party is, great, and if that's not where the party is, so be it. Well, maybe the, uh, the most apparent difference with the state Republican Party is over the question of right to work. You're against that legislation. I am. And why? Uh, my district is very much opposed to it. Um, I represent a very uh, blue-collar district north of the river. Um, we have a lot of employees at the, the Ford plant and, and uh, other labor jobs, and uh, that's just not good for them and their families, and so I'm not going to be able to support that. The legislature is in its second special session of this year. Uh, it, it's still going on, and is anything being accomplished? Sure. So we go back Monday um, in the Senate, and uh, basically the, the bill has gone from the Senate to the House. Uh, the House made some very significant changes and sent it back. Um, the question now is whether we go to conference or, uh, or whether the Senate will just pass what the House did. And this segment of the special session is dealing with abortion-related questions? Correct. It's dealing with abortion. Uh, what are your thoughts about Governor Greitens of your party vetoing the legislation that would have given $48 million to UMKC to match the private fundraising of $48 million or so to build a downtown UMKC Arts Campus. Yeah, I was very disappointed that he vetoed that. Uh, you know, basically, Missouri promised um, our higher education institutions that if they had a project that they felt they needed done, um, if they raised the local money, 50% of the cost of the project, the state would come with the other 50%. UMKC came to the table, the, the community rallied behind the project, raised $48 million, um, came to the state, said, okay, now put up, and uh, and Governor Greitens decided to break that promise after the legislature well, what, voted. What was his rationale, as you understand it? You know, it, it seemed very, um, it, it seemed very surface level analysis, to be honest. He said, uh, you know, the state doesn't have the money. Um, you know, it, it's forty-eight million dollars. But the thing is, you know, the state has a AAA bond rating. AAA bond rating means nothing unless you actually borrow money occasionally, right? Yeah. Uh, so we can get money very cheap right now. We're one of the few states in the country that can do that. Uh, spreading $48 million out with bonds is 2 to $3 million a year. Very easy to absorb in a $27 billion budget. He wants this, the university to come up with $48 million in the next two to three years, so just, which seems so, to me Some like, people say he's not very fond of urban areas in Missouri, the big cities, Kansas City and St. Louis, both Democratic cities that don't vote heavily for Republican candidates for governor. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what, what he's thinking most of the time. I mean, he doesn't communicate with us for the, for the most part. Do you think there's any problem with the state based on what he's doing now, the governor, uh, continuing to subsidize portions of the sports complex and I think also Bartle Hall? Yeah, I mean, those, those were agreements that are coming near expiration. Um, and so here in the next couple years, um, we'll see if, if uh, the state continues to help with the maintenance there or not. Now, now it's very different in Kansas City. We, we pay um, a couple million dollars a year to help maintain those facilities. Um, in St. Louis, we actually pay debt service on the dome, which is a completely different deal and something that uh, doesn't have a lot of support over here. But Every time people uh, gather and talk about Missouri politics, you hear the need for ethics reform. Sure. Is that something you're concerned about? Yeah, I mean, it's something that we hear about um, certainly in the press, uh, probably more so in the press yeah. than the public, to be honest. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we're, uh, we, we could always do better. How, how do you think your party, the Republican Party, is doing nationally? It's failed to pass 
health care, obviously, nothing so far on tax reform. Uh, the party has both houses of Congress and the presidency, and a conservative majority in the U.S. Supreme Court think the party is living up to its promise? It's pretty frustrating right now, to be honest. I mean, I think both on the national level and on the state level, um, the heads of the parties there, both the president and the governor, um, seem to uh, think that they can unilaterally push agendas without talking to anybody. I think that's what you're seeing. The, the president says, this is what we're going to do, and then the Congress is like, well, how do we do that? And doesn't quite get together. Quick, quick we have the same thing on the governor's did, did you want Missouri to expand Medicaid? Um, I did, but I wanted him to do it in a conservative way like Mike Pence did in Indiana. All right. Senator, out of time. Thank you very much for coming in. It's a pleasure to see you again. Great. Thank you very much. That is State Senator Ryan Sylvie of the 17th District. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus. Jason Grill is a senior advisor at Paris Communications. Steve Rose is a Johnson County civic leader and a columnist at the Kansas City Star. Jamika Kendricks is an education activist. And attorney Steve Marakian is with the law firm of Worsh, Hobbs and Marakian. Welcome to all of you. Good to see all of you again. Thanks for coming in. A fundraising letter from a Johnson County conservative group raised Steve Rose's hackles and prompted a strong response in his Kansas City Star column. The letter alleges that a lack of campaign financial resources caused the loss of conservative seats in last year's state elections. Rose says conservatives did not lack money, they lacked understanding. <laughs> last year's election, says Steve, is a total rejection of the conservative ethos to slash taxes and starve schools, slash virtually anything and everything that government provides. Ethos, in case you're wondering, is defined as a guiding principle. So, Steve, do you think it is likely conservatives will take your advice and change their ethos? Well, I don't think the guy who wrote the fundraising letter is going to change his mind because he needs and wants more money. But, you know, he used a, it. There were four things that I think were important in that bloodbath that occurred in, in, in which the conservatives were pretty much wiped out in Johnson County. And last a lot of last state, November. Last right? November, yeah. Um, first of all was the message. Um, I mean, everybody who was a moderate went out with the anti-Brownback message. They just pretty much didn't have to say much at the door, except I'm opposed to Brownback. That was the number one catalyst, of course. The second thing is they did go door to door. The moderates went out like I've never seen them before, count knocking on thousands and thousands of doors. Support groups blossomed everywhere, Blue Valley and Shawnee Mission. They were there, and they were very, 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 very active. And last but not least, the turnout went up. And the turnout, I think, was maybe the most important factor of all because I think it was moderates who normally don't get out for a primary who turned out. Yeah, Jason, it looks like moderates did what conservatives usually do, and that is get out in moss and, and go everywhere and do as much uh, as yeah, you can. Yeah, I think that it also is a presidential race, right? So yeah. We had that election going on, I think a lot of... Johnson County Republicans might have uh, voted for Hillary Clinton in that election, and I think that that really impacted it. And also, can't discount the door-to-door. -door. I mean, that in a local election is very key. If you can raise a little bit of money and just wear out your shoe leather, you have a really good chance of winning. Uh, Steve, some people think Kansas is not really all that conservative after all. It is truly a more moderate state. Do you think that's true or becoming true? No. I think Kansas is, is a very conservative state, and I think there was, there was um, one word that resulted in the moderates uh, uh, winning in, in large numbers in the last election, and that's uh, brownback, brownback, brownback. That's three words, but I think you get the point. Uh, th this was a, 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 an election in which people were very fed up with brownback's uh, tax plan that didn't work and his stubborn resistance to changing it. But I think Republicans in Johnson County and Republicans across the state of Kansas who are even more conservative than Johnson County um, uh, are very conservative. They're certainly more than merely center right. They're they're essentially right right or right to the right of right, and and it seems to me that uh, Johnson County goes through these uh, these throws every so often where they kind of moderate, but largely it depends upon who the candidates are, what the issues are, and they they should, in my view, stick with their essentially conservative principles, which are to reduce taxes and reduce spending, and that's the way government uh, helps the people. Well, Jamaica, state income taxes are now higher in Kansas, went up the 1st of July.
But plaintiffs in the school finance case, people who want more money for public schools, are back in the Supreme Court saying they must have more money already as soon as possible, maybe as much as a billion and a half dollars. Does that seem reasonable even to you as a school activist and advocate? I knew you would come to me with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it is reasonable, but in the current climate, probably not so much. I do think that we need to reassess how we invest our money and investing in schools is essentially invest, investing in our future leaders. And so do we need to have our, how we invest our money reflect our priorities? Absolutely. <coughs> Does it right now? Not so much. And so I do think that it's a reasonable request, but in the current climate, we haven't made it where that's gonna happen. It could, it could b blow up if the, if the Supreme Court really does come down with numbers like you're talking about. People who I think are even pro-education are going to stop and say, wait a minute, this isn't real, this isn't fair, well, and the, court, the court's gone off the deep end. You're saying and, it's and not if fair, the, how is it not? Well, I mean, there's a number, nobody knows what that number is, but uh, if my threw out a billion dollars, for I, I, example, I mean, I'd say. That, that's what the attorneys are saying. That's not, that's but not if we throw out a billion for war or business, that's okay. But when we throw out a billion for kids, it's not? Come well, on. I, don't, I think we be, should be Qu putting more in for kids, quickly, but not that much. Quickly, over here, Steve. Okay, I know the number. The number is whatever is the number is whatever the legislature says it is. The Supreme Court is supposed to determine whether the money is being equitably Distributed. set out. Yeah. They are not. They have no authority under the Constitution to decide what the number is going to be. Nobody's talking about suitability and saying they're going to allocate ten dollars. The Supreme Court of Kansas has no authority whatsoever to say whether it's 500 million, 900 million, or 300 million. That number is decided by elected representatives in the state of Kansas. Uh, but, but the court says that's not enough, and then the and they're wrong. legislature and has they're to wrong, act and, and they will continue uh, doing this. Uh, one quick final question to Mr. Rose. Kansas ended the fiscal year with a surplus. The month of <laughs> June, the last month of the fiscal year, came in with a surplus of $72 million above projections. 1.3% more for the year than was projected, a total of $5.82 billion. How did that happen in a state where there has been, according to many, such financial disaster? Well, they've changed the estimates three times. They have lowered them three times. Every time they came up short, they said, we're doing a bad job of estimating. Let's <laughs> find a new way of estimating. And so the numbers now are coming in over the underestimate. <laughs> but, but the final number it represents Fuzzy what math. was forecast. I like that. Yeah. Not for the year. Yeah, no, no, it did. So it did the meet the forecast, went beyond the forecast, wasn't quite as awful as had been described. It's it's a month. We'll see what happens over the <laughs> well, last Well, now the income taxes have been increased, so now well, back the, to their the original. monthly, uh, yeah. no, less than the original, actually. Oh, the, yeah. yeah. It's higher okay. than it was. If, not, it's higher than it was, but not higher than it was before Brownback. Right. If there is one thing that can be said definitive, uh, definitively about KCI's future, it is this. There is nothing definitive about KCI's future. We don't know for sure yet there will be a November vote to build a new KCI. We don't know yet what company will build a new airport. We don't know yet if a new airport would be financed privately or by public bonds. And the most important thing we don't know yet is whether voters will approve plans for a new airport. But if you could fill in these blanks, as I know you can, and define KCI's future to meet your best judgments, what would be your choices, Jamaica? Um, I don't think it will be approved. I think, well, it could be, but that's a long shot. Um, I, do, I do think that if it goes onto the ballot, they will include language for both the single terminal and uh, renovation, I think that would be smart because then you get the voters who are against it because they think we haven't considered all options to actually say, <laughs> yes, I'm willing to consider it. But I don't think that if they put the language in there that doesn't say it has to be a single terminal, I don't think that at the end we will actually, I, I think at the end we will end up with what they've been trying to push on us, which is Burns and McDonald's doing a privately financed airport. Uh, you, you think they should put both options on the ballot? Because I don't think they will. If you I put, don't 
don't do anything but renovate what exists, uh, that would take votes away from. I don't think it would take Bill votes away because when they're going out, because they've been doing a lot of campaigning for the single terminal, and as they're going around and they're talking to folks in the community, the majority of the people in their audiences are saying, "But we're not considering all of our options. Why are we not considering renovation?" And that's still the conversation. So if you want to get it passed, you're going to have to do both. Well, the mayor and city council don't want renovation. They they want. A new airport, but they and that's what's But the mayor the promised they would they would allow us to vote if we well, vote. But, but and we a, say no, we're okay a no with that. a no vote but on the new KCI means you're left with what's there right, now. No, because yes, it does. with the private financing, they don't have to go to a vote again. And he's already done no. what he promised to do, which is allow us to vote. If they go to prime, private private financing, you're, 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 you're they saying can there could be happen. a no vote on a new KCI, and the airport would be built. Anyway. No, I'm saying it could be a yes vote if they have both on there, and then it, they will go to a single terminal even though the voters were thinking they're going to consider both renovation and single well, terminal. I just there's only one in my opinion there's only one way that they're going to get a new airport passed and that is if it's what the public will perceive as a free airport mm -hmm. which means private finance. Well it's actually free it's in either case free. is it not? <laughs> I know but the polls show and I, I read the whole thing from front to back it's very clear that people do not perceive the public financing, however you explain it, as free. They still think this is going to come back and bite them at some point. Somebody says, but these guys are going to build it. It's their risk. They nod their heads. They understand that. And the numbers jump way up on the approval rating. Uh, have you heard the radio or TV commercials for Ridiculous. KCI and the future of the prospective commercials with the airplane pilot uh, talking yeah. about this great new airport yeah. in Kansas City? I didn't like the uh, I didn't like that commercial and I think they have pulled that one or are changing that. I saw a television commercial the other day that I thought was pretty good and I I think in my view and I'm a supporter of a new airport uh, but I agree with Steve completely to get it done and I don't think they're going to succeed, quite frankly. But to get it done, the mayor is going to have to get out in front of this, and they're going to have to go on a massive campaign to convince people of something which isn't true, and that is they're going to get a free airport. Okay. Nothing is free. It doesn't matter. Developers, private developers, don't build anything free. Okay? Thank you. The money is coming from the public, either by paying it in new airport fees or something. None of it's free. Steve's absolutely right. You need to convince the people that it's free by telling them it's not going to be paid for with your tax dollars. If you can tell them that, and that may be true in reality, and convince them that this will bring in jobs and revenue and be a shi bright shining star for Kansas City when people come into our area, maybe they would support it. But the way to do it is through private developers, Burns and McDonald or some of the others who have put their bids in, a good company like that. Tell them it's free, it's private, it's private financed. The airports are paying. I think for, this the, is the, air, crazy. the airlines are paying like, for it, and gonna, then we, people might. We got to wrap this up. Saying we have to lie to the people <laughs> to make them do I'm not something saying they lie. don't want to do. I'm saying, I'm saying and it, that's okay. It's, it's, no, I'm uh, saying it's like any campaign. Yeah. Final question, to Mr. Rose. Yeah. Should Burns and McDonald get preference from the city because it came forth with the idea? Well, I think if all the bids are fairly equal, I think the one the step forward courageously when nobody had even put this idea on the table and said we will take this on deserves a little bit special consideration. And All, right. All right, a recent survey by the Pew Research Group confirms what many of us knew without benefit of research. Democrats and Republicans view major institutions quite differently. Party faithful hold differing views of churches and religion, universities and colleges, and news and media organizations. And there are also differences between liberal to moderate and more conservative members of the same party. In broad general terms, Republicans are more negative than Democrats toward educational institutions and the news media, but hold a more favorable view than Democrats of churches and religious organizations. There are also differences in how the two parties view labor unions and financial institutions. But let us start with the obvious question. Why do Republicans have such a negative view of the national news media? And we'll start with Steve Marakian. Well, I think it's not just anecdotal, me personally. I think it's, it's very much uh, across the board for people who, who think similar to the way I think, what people who call themselves constitutional conservatives and people who perhaps aren't even, don't go into those sort of intellectual, ethereal kind of things, but just consider themselves 
essentially, you know, normal, hardworking, straight-laced Americans. I think the problem has become that, that from my perspective, and I've been around a long time, yes, I have, have never seen, really I have never time. in my lifetime, and that's six, almost 70 years, I have never seen a news media that is, that is not only as dishonest, but is also completely one-sided. We always have had liberal commentators. Charles, uh, Walter Cronkite was liberal, but he was trusted and he was generally honest. We now have situations where pe and people know this. When you see CNN, not just the false stories and the problems they've had and so forth, but when you see and look at studies that show in a 400-minute in a segment, 393 minutes was devoted to one story and 99% is anti the president. That's because you the president. No, wait a okay. second. No, no, no. You say to yourself, this is what most people, other than Jason, are saying, this is not honest. Well, try, uh, try, well, 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 Jason, whoa, whoa, so whoa, whoa. Time out. Hold it. Time out. Now, Jason, <laughs> tr why, why do Republicans have well, such a negative view of the national news I, I, I media? I think you'd have to be... Steve, I, I think you obviously have to say that Trump has impacted people's views of the media Certainly. in the last two years. Ninety-nine percent negative. Poll, is that fair? It wasn't that high before Trump was running. Ninety-nine percent negative. Is that fair? I watch it's CNN not. all the time. I watch MSNBC. I watch Fox News. I watch all of them. Those watch are, PBS. I do watch PBS oh, too. Good. Um, <laughs> obviously, those are going to be opinionated shows. But every single night, when Donald Trump does an interview last night with New York Times, they're going to talk about that. I mean, first off, why is he doing an interview with the New York Times, Mike? I thought it was a failing newspaper. But they're going to be trying to help it be great again. Right. And so that's yes. newsworthy, right? And that's why their ratings are in the tank, because most Americans don't agree with you. That's all I'm saying. You have your are opinion. You I'm totally right saying now? most Americans do not agree with you. It's widely against you. Right. The like majority of most Americans. Americans. No, most are Americans. You serious? Republicans and independents, the vast majority of Americans are watching Fox News because they're tired. <laughs> Don't let the, this he, is, he is fact. Right. The Fox this News is ratings fact. are high. Where Hated did you get are Fox facts News for Fox, Fox oh. News? CNN, CNN has lower ratings yeah. than MSNBC. Well, let me ask which has Jamaica no a question. Nickelodeon right, right, has right. more ratings right. than CNN. Right. Right. Honestly, Jamaica. Jamaica. You said Jamaica. you were going to calm down this time. Jamaica. Well, listen right. to me. All right. uh, I got you. What about colleges and universities? <laughs> what, what about them would explain why Republicans seem to hold a more negative view of them? than do Democrats. People are probably going to get upset with me for this. I, but I, so. honestly, I honestly <laughs> believe that um, conservative Christians and even some moderate Christians kind of want people to believe what they believe. It's kind of what the religion is about. And I'm not saying I'm against Christians because I actually happen to be one. About college. However, <laughs> and I think that's why, because colleges are considered to be liberal. And they're teaching people all these things that are not aligned with these values. And these folks come out and they're not um, contributing to society in the way that Republicans think would be OK, or conservative Christians. I don't want to say Republicans. And so if you look at it, there's a correlation, because they're really high on religion and they're low on education. or <laughs> Oh, Higher colleges and institutions. Well, what, what the, Guys the, like me. What, what I'm just a right wing nut who has no education. No, I'm not calling you a nut. I'm not calling you a nut. Well, on saying, education? But your religion, it actually hey, plays hey. a part. No, it Hold doesn't. Hang in, in there. Hang no, in it there. doesn't. It's my turn. I don't uh, know it is your turn. Uh, uh, turn. What would the wow. riots that take place at universities whenever a conservative speaker is to appear on campus and that speaker is blocked from appearing or speaking? Would that be one of the reasons Republicans hold a negative view? No, but I think that no. that's wrong. Yes. I think that they should yes. allow these people oh, okay. to... That, is that it? That's it. Oh, oh wow. Now, now, we, have, that's all 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 these notes. now we head to the soapbox <laughs> for Roast and Toast, where the Rockheads have 30 seconds each to uphold or scold people and events in the news. We start with Jason. I'll keep this quick so we can get Mike's uh, yes, do that, toast. Yes, do that. I just want to <laughs> say we're all thinking about John McCain, Senator John McCain, a true hero in our country, a bipartisan leader in the Senate, a lion of the Senate. Uh, hopefully he can fight through this uh, very tough time with brain cancer. I know the same type of thing that Bo Biden and Ted Kennedy dealt with. So we're all praying for Senator John McCain, and he's a true hero in our country. So, Very good. Uh, Jamaica. I'm going to be really short. I did Betsy DeVos, uh, roasted her last week. I'm going to do it again this week, just because she doesn't value education. And Pell Grant, if you've seen the news, you know it. She's the education secretary. Yes. And she's trying to reduce Pell Grants again, so. What's a Pell Grant? You're trying to take away from no, your I'm time. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> what, the, um, what is a Pell Grant? Um, it's money that goes to low-income uh, students who are For, trying to, to go, go to college, college so that they can go to college. All right, Steve Rose. Well, I'd like to toast U.S. Senator from Kansas, Jerry Moran 
for stepping forward and helping to kill what I consider to be one of the worst pieces of legislation ever to come out, or it didn't come out, but almost came out, of Congress. And it, it would have been, I think, a disaster for the people of America, and I applaud his courage. Steve. Unless you live under a rock, you know about Charlie Gard. Apparently, all you pro-choice harpies are rock trolls because of your appalling failure to support Charlie's mother in choosing life over death, which is now exposed now and NARAL as agenda-driven hypocrites who could care less about human life or women's rights. Planned Parenthood demands a mother have a right to choose to kill her child one day before birth, but won't support a woman who's trying to keep her already born child alive. <laughs> Apparently, Charlie's life is not worth saving, and apparently moms are only worth defending if they choose death over life for their children. And finally, here is a rose to a Canadian who won't identify as either male or female and wants to be called they. They also wants their offspring's birth certificate to be gender-free, presumably the first in the world. They says, I'm recognizing them, apparently the pronoun for the child, as a baby and trying to give them all the love and support to be the most whole person that them can be. So at the moment, it appears the baby is genderless and at least one of its parents is brainless. And that is Ruckus for this time. We're back next Thursday at 7. Now for the Ruckus and the crew, Mike Shannon saying thanks for watching and good night. Production funding for Ruckus has been provided by gifts from Dave and Jamie Cummings, The Hartwig Family, Hush Blackwell, Barbara and Peter Gattermeyer, and by viewers like you. Thank you.